Welcome to DIY for Homeowners by Mother Daughter Projects. I'm Steph. I'm Vicki. And today we're at my house and we're replacing my mailbox. Join us as we show you how we did it. We're using eight one by four by eight foot pressure treated boards and two four by four posts. A brand new mailbox, a post light, some foam post hole mix, and a brad nailer. From the one by fours, we cut 21 pieces at 19 inches. Here we're setting up a fence, which is just a way to cut all the boards to the same length without repeated measuring. With each board, we started by cutting off each end so we had a nice fresh cut. We also cut two pieces at 22 and a half inches and four pieces at four and three fourths inches long. We cut each four x four post longer than we needed and we'll trim them in the very end when we know exactly the height we need. We went back and forth on whether to stain or paint the mailbox. We went with paint because we had some left over from painting my house a couple years ago. Mom primed everything with a Bayer Outdoor Primer and then we painted with a Bayer Outdoor Paint. Mom ended up painting three sides of the post black to give the slats a more defined look in the finished mailbox. Mom is turning the post so the gray faces outward and then we're starting by making the top shelf that the box itself will sit on. We're using outdoor wood glue and galvanized brad nails for this build. We secured the shelf and then put it into place. We're very visual builders, so we have to put everything into place to test the fit before we start attaching anything. We decided on the placement of the box itself, and once we had the spacing figured out, we moved on to adding the slats. We're test fitting them here, and for the spacing, we're just using large paint sticks. These really come in handy and come three to a pack for under a dollar. With those secure, mom touched up the paint so no black was showing. Then we flipped over the mailbox and attached the rest of the slats. Some of the 4x4 was a little wonky, so as the glue dried, we clamped it where it needed it. With that done, we stood it up and next we attached the shelf for the box. Again, spacing with large paint sticks. We brad nailed it into place. We also added the light to the post a while back, which was just with two screws. We put the box in place, making sure the door fully opens. We used scrap pieces of one x four to provide support for the box. Here we're adding painter's tape so we can tell where the supports need to go on the shelf. We glued and brad nailed the supports into place. The top was left white as you won't see that in the final build. We'll attach the box once the mailbox is in place. We headed outside to make the two holes for the post. The ground here is really hard clay, so we utilize a couple of different tools to make this a bit easier. First, we have a large auger drill bit on a rigid right angle drill, a shovel, and a post hole digger. The auger worked great to break up the hard clay. Here are the finished holes. And the mailbox is a little heavy, so we just rolled out our Husky table right into the street as it's pretty low traffic. We got it into place and found the front hole was a little deeper. We just backfilled that with a little bit more dirt. We can now cut off the excess of the 4x4 posts using our Makita Subcompact Reciprocating Saw with Diablo Woodcutting Blade. Again, our table really came in handy here. We got the mailbox in place, leveled it out, and here we're using foam fence post mix to secure it into the ground. We've been wanting to try this product and knew Mom's Mailbox would be the perfect place to try it out. The instructions say one bag is good for an eight inch diameter by 36 inch deep hole, and the holes we dug are only about 15 inches, so I thought this would be simple to just use one bag. This sets up really fast. You mix for 15 seconds and have to pour it immediately before it starts to set in the bag. Having never used this product before, I didn't realize how liquidy it was and started putting too much in the first hole before I noticed. Whoops! <laughs> so I quickly moved on to the second hole. It started expanding a lot, so we just watched it grow and expand. I will say we did get a perfect amount in the second hole. Once it was safe to touch but not fully cured, we started to remove excess, which was not that difficult. Mom used an X-Acto knife to cut the parts away from the wood. 
a little more scraping and paint, and you can't even tell the difference. To finish off, we noticed that this was a very muddy patch. My neighbors had some leftover edging from our project, and we used it to create some simple landscaping for the mailbox. We dug two holes on the side to add some monkey grass and finished it off with some leftover mulch from my neighbors. Lastly, we secured the box into place. It's tight quarters in here, so I'm using a right angle attachment with a flexible shaft to secure the box in eight places. These are just outdoor screws that I'm using. If we ever need to replace the box itself, we can easily unscrew it. And here it is, all done. I love that mom painted the 4x4 on the inside. I think it gives the slats a really defined look. And if you're wondering, where are the house numbers? We did buy some numbers, but returned them because we realized it would be easier and cheaper to cut out vinyl letters on our Cricut Maker, and we got a gray vinyl to match the mailbox. We're not going to share that version as we don't want to share our address, but here's a demo on our old mailbox on how we attached the numbers. We cut the numbers out of vinyl, added a transfer sheet on top, put the letters in place, and remove the transfer sheet. In the final mailbox, we put the address on both sides and small numbers on the front of the mailbox. What we learned! 15 years ago, way before Mother Daughter Projects, we actually replaced this mailbox. This is when Steph was still very reluctantly helping me. I remember we had this discussion about concrete. Should we put concrete in the hole? We were like, we don't know how to do that, so we didn't do it. And the mailbox stayed. But as you can see by this tiny little push, that this mailbox was long overdue for replacement. We bought this wood about two weeks before we needed it because it's pressure treated, so it's a little wet when you first get it, and you want to give it plenty of time to dry out before you paint it. And while it was drying out, we'd also turn it occasionally to make sure that it dried pretty evenly, as evenly as it can. We got some wonky, wonky pieces of wood, but we overbought a little bit just because we knew, knew that might happen. There are lots of different mailbox designs, so find one that you like. Drive around your neighborhoods and see what inspires you. That's actually what we did. Steph found this mailbox that we based the design on, and we actually drove by it and took pictures. We didn't actually stop and measure, although we really, really wanted to. But just take a look at what's in your neighborhood and find something that inspires you. If you're thinking about making a mailbox, be sure to check with the United States Postal Service online. They'll have information on how far it needs to be from the curb, how tall it needs to be, so keep those in mind when you're doing your design. And if you want to see some of the ways we refresh the mailbox at my house, take a look at the videos over here. And thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.